One in two buyers face unexpected costs during the purchasing process. Qualifying for a loan and having bad neighbors is a top fear for first home buyers. More than one in three buyers exceed their budget. The number of first home buyers has fallen below the decade average. ABS data showed the number of new home loan commitments for first homeowners has fallen 48% since its peak in January 2021. First home buyer activity has now returned to a lower level than what it was recorded pre-pandemic. Although lending has fallen from historically high levels recently, the value of loan commitments remains significantly higher than it was pre-pandemic levels. owner occupier loans in July 2022 were 40% higher than they were compared with February 2020, while investors were up 78% for the same period. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has released lending indicators with the value of new home loan commitments for housing down for the month. With half as many first home buyers circling in the market, searching for a place to call their own home right now, it could be be a great time to pounce as a drop in demand from first timers in the property market means there's less competition right now. This also coincides with falling property prices. The domain end of year wrap 2022 shows house prices nationally have fallen 4.9% from the March 2022 price peak, which is down $53,000. Today, we're going to cover how to prepare to buy your first home in 2023. We're going to go through and have a look at the schemes and grants available. What are some of the buying costs? How to deal with more mortgage repayments, as well as looking at what are some of the buying costs involved and how much you can borrow and much, much more. Step by step, so keep watching. So let's start off with what schemes are available. There are currently three schemes and grants that can help you purchase your first home. You've got the first home buyer's grant, you've got the home guarantee scheme, and you've got the first home buyer's choice scheme. Depending on which state you're located in, some of these grants and schemes won't be available to you. Let's go into each in a bit more detail. The first is a first homeowner's grant. If you're purchasing or building a brand new home that has never been lived in, then you might be eligible for the first homeowner's grant. In New South Wales, the government will put $10,000 towards your purchase. If you're in, say, for example, Queensland, it's $15,000. It does change state by state. Now, these funds will go towards the purchase price of any eligible property. It is capped at a maximum property value of $750,000. Some of the details do change from state to state, so it's important you look into it or consult with your mortgage broker to understand what you qualify for. Your first new home can be a house, a townhouse, an apartment, or a unit that's newly been built, purchased off the plan, or substantially renovated. Each state and territory has slightly different requirements, feel free to hit us up if you would like to find out more information on what you might qualify for. To be eligible for the first homeowner's grant, you or your partner must not have previously owned land or property in Australia. You must occupy your first home as a principal place of residence within 12 months of the construction or purchase of your home taking place and subsequently live in the property for at least six months continuously. Moving on to the home guarantee scheme. The home guarantee scheme allows eligible first homeowners to lend up to 90 5% of the property value without lender's mortgage insurance, which saves thousands of dollars in costs. Now, this scheme is based on meeting some specific criteria, which is based on the property you're purchasing, the value, the household income, as well as citizen status. Lender's mortgage insurance is a once-off premium that is added to your loan when you have less than a 20% deposit. This mortgage insurance protects the lender. If you default on your home loan, this scheme waives this cost as the government is effectively being your guarantor. The third scheme available is called the First Home Buyer's Choice. If you're based in New South Wales, in the last few months, there's been an announcement of a new scheme called the First Home Buyer's Choice. This scheme will give borrowers the ability to purchase a new or established property between $600,000 and $1.5 million with the option to either pay stamp duty or an annual property tax. What this means for first home buyers is they can either pay a lump sum stamp duty payment at the beginning of their loan or pay an annual property tax of $400 plus 0.3% of the property land value. But now this scheme is strictly limited to New South Wales alone and will begin from the 16th of January, 2023. This scheme aims to reduce the cost of entering in the property market by reducing the initial stamp duty cost, which is said to further help first home buyers who have smaller deposits get into the market. If you find value in these videos, it'd be greatly appreciated if you'd hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things property and finance. Stamp duty is known as a transfer duty. It's effectively a tax put in place by state governments on purchases of land or property. How much you pay will vary from property to property, state to state, as well as depending on the price of the property, as well as many other factors. Therefore, stamp duty can often hurt first home buyers from getting into the marketplace due to the fact that it can
can be a quite substantial cost. The stamp duty cost is an upfront cost and it does need to be covered by the borrower outside of the bank deposits required. There is some good news here. If you are purchasing a home for the first time, once again, depending on the state you're located, you might be eligible for some stamp duty concessions. However, keep in mind, sometimes these concessions are quite low and in a lot of cases, most first home buyers find that they don't quite meet that minimum standard. For example, in Queensland, on a $500,000 purchase or below, there's nil stamp duty. Most first homeowners looking for a home in Brisbane, for example, aren't gonna find anything really under that six to 700,000. So in that situation, the concession is meaningless because they don't actually qualify for it. This is pretty similar across the grounds. Each state has a different stamp duty concession threshold. If you wanna find out more, feel free to hit us up. We'd love to have a chat and we can run you through those details. What are some of the buying costs? As well as a purchase price of the property, there are several costs associated with buying your first home. These additional costs can be anywhere between five and 7% of the property value. One of the biggest costs we talked about it earlier is stamp duty, which is collected at a state government level. Stamp duty is calculated based on the property's purchase price and can run into many thousands of dollars. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but fortunately for some first homeowners, they may actually be eligible for stamp duty concessions depending on the value of the property they purchase. Some of the other costs that you'll need to budget include loan establishment fees and service fees. These can range from 100 to $600. Lenders mortgage insurance this is if you have less than a 20% deposit and can range from anywhere from a few thousand dollars up to 20, 30, 40 grand. Typically, the lender's mortgage insurance is added onto the loan, so it's not a cost out of pocket. Settlement and drawing fees, these can range from anywhere from two to three, four hundred dollars. Registration fees, these are government fees and can range from about 1,500 to two grand. Building and pest fees, this can cost about $500 approximately. Solicitor fees, I'd allow about $1,500 here. Insurances, these can range quite considerably and it's worth doing a quote online so you have an idea of what you're going to be up for month to month to insure the property. If the property is under a body corporate, such as a unit or a townhouse, it's wise to speak with your solicitor here because oftentimes you might find that the body corporate has building insurance in place to cover you. Council and water rates. This typically gets worked out by your solicitor. So consult with them to find out how much the costs here are. Body corporate fees. This ranges from property to property and it's wise to check so you know what you're gonna be up for ongoing. Be sure to factor these into your budget going forward so you're not caught short. How much deposit will I need? We've all heard it said before that it's ideal to have a 20% deposit so you avoid mortgage insurance. However, if you qualify for things like the home guarantee scheme, you can work with as little as 5% deposit without having to pay lenders mortgage insurance. In a lot of cases, most first homeowners ditch the idea of saving a 20% deposit because they feel the cost of mortgage insurance is the opportunity cost of getting in the market now rather than waiting as the market upticks or changes and might find themselves in a position where they can no longer afford to get in the market. At some point, you need to determine how much money is enough and to take the leap in buying your first home. The size of deposit you'll require is subject to several different factors. Generally speaking, most lenders can work with about a minimal deposit of 8% of the purchase price. That also depends if you qualify for the home guarantee scheme. As I talked about earlier, if you do qualify for that, well, then you can work with as little as 5% deposit. The more deposit you have, the better your chances of getting your home loan approved. That being said, there are strategies that will allow you to boost your deposit, such as if you qualify for any government grants like the first homeowner's grant, we talked about earlier, you can use that towards your deposit. The home guarantee scheme, which you can lend up to 95% with no mortgage insurance. Or if you have a family member willing to help as a guarantor, which means it negates the need to have a deposit. As a general guide, whilst a 20% deposit, so for example, $100,000 deposit on a $500,000 purchase would be required and is preferred by lenders, you can buy with as little as 10 or even 5% deposit if you meet the eligibility criteria set out by the lenders. If you do want to understand more, once again, Again, feel free to hit us up. We're a mortgage broker that helps buyers right across Australia and we can do an assessment based on your deposit and what you can achieve with it. It's a good idea to aim for a deposit of at least eight to 10% of the purchase price, which is a good starting point. How much can I borrow? When lenders assess your loan application, they look at several factors to determine how much you can borrow. The biggest among them is your finances. Lenders effectively look at your household profit and loss sheet. They wanna see the details of your income and expenses, so be prepared to share this sort of information. They'll be looking at your pay slips, your bank statements, as well as any liabilities that you have. This includes discretionary spending, which means three to six months leading up to applying for 
for a home loan, it's not really a time to be spending wildly on travel, dining, and new clothing. Being seen as sensible and frugal by the lender goes a long way towards success. The banks aren't gonna go through line by line looking at your transactions and working with a mortgage broker like ourselves, we can help navigate around any issues that you might have with high expenses and navigating to get the right outcome for you. Securing your property. We'd always recommend getting a pre-approval in place. Once you have your pre-approval in place and a sound knowledge of your financial situation, you can now source and secure your first home with confidence. Choices around what types of home you want will be entirely individual with location and budget both playing major roles in your decision. Of course, sorting through listings and attending open homes are all part of the educational process. This is something we help with and have tools and resources that will assist with navigating through these steps. Then there's the negotiation and settlement process where you'll be dealing with an array of new professionals such as conveyances, building and pests, which we can help recommend the right people. Now you might wanna tackle this yourself or you might choose to draw an expert of a buyer's agent to help through the process. How do I deal with the repayments? Your home Home loan repayments will be a function of the amount you borrow, the period for which you have the loan, and the prevailing interest rate attached to your mortgage. Therefore, the way to minimize your repayments is by borrowing less with either spending less or having a bigger deposit, borrowing over a longer period, or by seeking a loan product with the lowest interest rate. The key here should really be to avoid over leveraging. You should have a financial buffer in place to cover for any unexpected cost, particularly in the initial years of having a loan, especially while you're building up equity. Are you preparing to buy your first home in 2023? Well, we can help. Here at Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers and deal with home buyers right around Australia. So if you're looking for a great mortgage broker, call us on 1300 088 065 or visit our website and fill out a contact form at huntergalloway.com.au and we'll see you next time.